Good morning, everybody. This is uh, Carl Griffith from Graybar, and I want to welcome you to our G2 Talk webinar series this month, where we're going to have a discussion about lighting. And uh, Graybar currently has a program that we're running called Race to the Socket, and that's what all of this is about, about all of us, you and Graybar, racing to the socket as we provide opportunities and, and energy-saving solutions to our customers. Before we get going, I'd like to spend a, just a few moments and introduce Graybar to you. And I'm going to do that by showing you one of the marketing statements or mission statements that we have at Graybar. And this one's pretty easy. Graybar helps customers power, network, and secure their facilities or buildings with speed, intelligence, and efficiency. And if we think about lighting, we're doing exactly, exactly that. As uh, lighting becomes an opportunity for us to reduce, reduce uh, customers' uh, uh, electricity consumption, we're helping consume energy, we're being more efficient, and we're attacking the power side of the equation and building sustainability. We're all about facilities, and we can talk about the network and intelligence as we spend a little bit of time maybe talking about, uh, about lighting controls. All of this fits in, this whole lighting conversation fits in exactly into Graybar's DNA and yours as well. Uh, before we get started, I just wanted to highlight a couple things. The first 50 people that joined us on the webinar today on the G2 Talk webinar series uh, will receive an email uh, for a cup of coffee at a leading coffee chain. Uh, so check your email later today, and you'll get an email, and you can exchange that email for a cup of coffee, and we're very happy to do that. I wanted to remind everybody that the G2 Talk webinars are all archived on graybar.com. So if you'll go to the Graybar homepage, graybar.com, you'll see the G2 Talk webinar logo. If you'll click on that, there'll be a, a, a direction to the archive, and you can click on this presentation. You can share that link with your friends. You can also uh, look at some of the other uh, content that we've been providing all year. And last, I want to let you know that this, this uh, presentation is interactive. By that, I mean that we'll have an opportunity for Q&A. So if you'll look at the bottom of your screen, uh, you'll see a little button there that says Q&A on that, and if you'll click on that, a dialog box will open, and it'll give you the opportunity to type a question in. As we go through the web, uh, webinar today, I would encourage you to type your questions in the dialog box, and at the end of the webinar, we'll go through those questions, and, uh, and uh, we'll answer them for you. So we'll do our Q&A in that manner. Uh, so be sure to use, click that button and use that dialog box uh, to an ask your questions. So as we move forward, I'd like to introduce to you our uh, lighting subject matter expert today that's going to be with us and present uh, for our webinar. So I'm introducing to you today Mary Beth Gotti. And Mary Beth is the manager of the GE Lighting Institute in Cleveland, Ohio. And I'm happy to say that that is my hometown. So welcome, uh, Mary Beth. Mary Beth has uh, worked for GE for over 35 years in a number of technology and marketing and sales positions, including lamp development engineer, and she's also been a scientist for both incandescent and metal halide lamps and a senior lighting application specialist, specialist at the Institute. Um, she was named the manager of the lighting education in 1980, uh, 1995 and became the manager of the Lighting Institute in 1998. She has a BS and an MS degrees in physics and an MBA from John Carroll University in my hometown, Cleveland. She is also an LC, which means lighting certified, and owns the credential, LC credential from the NCQLP, or the National Council on Qualifications for the Lighting Professions. So she is an LC. Uh, Mary Beth is active in the Illuminating Engineering Society, IES. I do get their newsletter, which is great. It's a good, great source of information. And uh, she currently serves on the Executive Committee of the National Lighting Bureau. So without uh, holding up this webinar any longer, I'd like to present to you Mary Beth Gotti. Thank you, Mary Beth, for joining us today. Well, thanks so much, Carl, and welcome, everybody, to this webinar. And I can't think of, of a better time to uh, really learn more about what's happening in lighting. And, and clearly, as I look at all the changes that, have, that are occurring, uh, the pace of change is faster than anything I've certainly experienced in, in, in my entire career. And, and technology is driving uh, a lot of this excitement, uh, driving this, this revolution in, in lighting, uh, if you will. Uh, but so is legislation. And the Department of Energy is getting very 
uh, interested and has been for a number of years now in, in really looking at ways to uh, save energy, to uh, really uh, conserve and, and perhaps minimize the burning of some fossil fuels because of greenhouse gas emissions. And, and, and the bottom line is there's lots of choices out there. And the race to the socket really means racing to the socket to, uh, to save money. You know, there's something called the cost of waiting, and, and not going to more energy-efficient solutions means you're throwing money uh, money out the door, uh, which you could easily be spending on something else. Uh, the race to the socket, meaning let's make sure you, you get some of these energy-saving products in place before some of the utility rebates perhaps dry up as uh, some of the obsolete technologies truly aren't available I I anymore, and race to the socket to take advantage of, of some of the, the specials that are occurring uh, through through uh, GE and Graybar during the month of October, so a lot of, of specials uh, during the month uh, of, of October. So uh, again, thanks for joining, and why don't we go ahead to, uh, and get started here? Uh, we mentioned about the involvement of the Department of Energy and looking at lighting and saying, hey, everybody, you know, we've got some technologies out there that have been around since the 30s and the 40s, and there's better solutions out there right now. And this pie chart says it all. Why are they so interested in lighting? Because it's still a big chunk of all the energy that we use in our commercial uh, in our commercial buildings here. You know, 25, 30 percent. I mean, it's come down as more energy efficient solutions over the decades have been put into place, but but clearly not fast enough. And lighting and air conditioning are so so tied together. Uh, you know, for every watt you take out of your lighting system, you can take a, a third of watt out of air conditioning load when the air conditioning is on. If you know you have air conditioned spaces, so. Again, lots of obsolete technologies, and the one that really comes into mind are, are you know, good old T12 fluorescent lamps, and some of you probably still have them in, in your facilities, but, you know, the, the retrofit from T12s to, to T8 fluorescents has been going on for more than 20 years, and yet there's hundreds of millions of T12 fluorescent lamps that are still out there. So a lot of product improvements uh, since then. Um, I don't want to spend a ton of time on legislation, but but uh, I just want to point out there really are three legislative acts right now that are dictating uh, which lamps we're able to make. So minimum energy efficiency standards uh, that are in place, which affect what we can make and therefore affect what you can purchase uh, for your facilities. And if you look at the products, you know that are that are getting the attention. Of course, for the average household, uh, the average consumer, it's the incandescent A-line uh, bulbs that are that are uh, being legislated out. The 100 watt, the 75 watt are gone. We have to stop making the 60 and 40 watt by January 1st of next year. Uh, for your facilities, uh, the uh, the T12 uh, obsolescence is going to be very very impactful. Again, old technology, but Again, really, uh, most of those we can no longer make as of the middle of last year. Even some of the standard T8s um, will be obsolete by the middle of uh, middle of next year. Yeah, tons of T8s. Uh, one of the mis mis misconceptions is that T8 fluorescent lamps are going away. Absolutely not true. As a matter of fact, we'll talk about some of the great product improvements there. Uh, for any of you that have two by two fixtures, the same thing applies as with the linear, where uh, you know going uh, the T12s are essentially uh, gone with uh, just again relatively few uh, exemptions there to go to a higher efficiency T8 solution. If you got down lights or accent lights somewhere in your facility, standard halogen car lamps are, are going away. Uh, I mean, par 38s, par 30s. So again, you can still buy halogens, but LEDs clearly are having a, a huge uh, impact in this particular application. And then finally, for, for those of you who might have metal halide uh, in your facilities there, uh, there's no light bulbs that are being obsoleted out, but, but fixtures are being impacted because of the uh, newer, uh, newer ballast or pulse start systems, if you will. So lots of changes, but you know, the bottom line is, you know, it's been pretty conservative and there's other products that are readily available that can really make a huge difference uh, in, in your energy bill, as you will. So this is all ongoing. Again, T12's going away. Some of the T8's going away by middle uh, of next year. Um, again, standard halogen power lamps uh, basically, uh, basically primarily uh, eliminated. If you look at you know, the cost of lighting in your facilities, this pie chart says it all. Um, you know, 88% or so, you know, plus or minus, of the cost of your lighting system is energy, and the rest is in replacement lamps 
and the labor it takes to, to install them. So anything we can do to, to, to be more energy efficient with our solutions is going to save you uh, a big chunk of your cost of, of lighting pie. Uh, utility rebates and it, it still exist, and again, I would encourage you to, to get moving because uh, they are changing as we speak. Uh, but there still are a significant number of, of rebates across the country. So whether you're thinking about some of the more energy efficient T8 solutions, uh, again, let, look now to see if there's some, some rebates for that. And, and for some of the LED solutions, uh, uh, there's some, some great rebates that can offset the cost of going to this more energy efficient type of a solution. You know, as we think about all the different uh, applications uh, that are out there, I can't think of one. Um, oops, excuse me, hit the wrong one. There you go. As we think about uh, all the different uh, types of, of applications there, but, you know, LEDs um, are competing in all various layers of light. You know, and you think about the real, the hottest ones right now, outdoor lighting because of the much longer service life. Uh, clearly, industrial and warehouse, regardless of ceiling height. Now, there's some great solutions. We'll talk more about that. Uh, accent and track lighting, down lights, cans, and, and commercial ceiling. So, I mean, fluorescent is 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 still going to be around for, uh, for for quite a while, and it really provides great value. But again, LEDs are are competing in all of these various layers of, layers of light, and will continue to uh, improve and, and evolve. You know, as you look at so some of the key trends, so what's happening, you know, everybody's got offices someplace in their facilities, uh, light levels are moderating, and that results in, you know, faster payback. Let's not over light spaces. Um, we can add task lighting for more difficult tasks and for older eyes. Uh, we're seeing, you know, integration of, of second generation improved fluorescent systems, which make a huge difference in energy savings and life. Uh, more LED solutions being integrated for everything from ceilings to task and accent lighting and, and daylight integration and controls. You know, let's utilize daylight, let's dim down or shut off systems, um, electric lighting systems that aren't needed. So control strategies are, are, are becoming a bigger and, and bigger deal. As we look at trends for, for the industrial and warehouse type of applications, you know, we've seen these fluorescent uh, high bay fixtures, which have replaced things like multi-vapor or high-pressure sodium. Uh, so it, because of controllability, energy efficiency, again, light levels moderating somewhat, adding task lighting where appropriate, using controls to shut off lighting and aisles if there's not a forklift or person in the aisle to, uh, to, to pick merchandise or pick products off of sh off shelves, and, and some new very exciting LED general lighting solutions, which really can, can look at giving you even uh, better energy savings and more maintenance-free types of, of installations. We'll look at that uh, in, in a bit. And, and then finally, outdoor lighting. You know, it's the change from yellow light to white light, which has been going on for quite a while now, more natural and normal. Light levels, again, coming down. You don't need to blast your parking lot with light. Uh, it's all about distribution and the quality of light, which really can enhance safety and security in those spaces. Um, let's eliminate light trespass, control light pollution. So again, LED is clearly uh, providing this better quality of light, energy savings, and uh, and even more importantly, this increased service life. So that uh, you, you're not really uh, having to to change out light sources that are out uh, any any more often than you have to. So 10 year service life is possible. Okay, uh, just just a brief look at um, at uh, LED replacement lamps here. Um, Energy Star is a key thing to look for, and there's all kinds of everything from par lamps for down lights and accent lights and, and decoratives and all A-line types of, types of products there that can meet the performance criteria uh, established uh, by Energy Star. It's very important in the adoption of compact fluorescents. Doing the same thing for LEDs, uh, utility rebates uh, normally require Energy Star for these replacement lamps, okay? As you look at replacement lamp categories, again, there's direction, omnidirectional, A-line lamps, basically dumping light in all directions, uh, reflector lamps for down lights, directional lamps for everything from, again, down lights, accent lights, indoors and outdoors, as well as uh, decorative types of products, um, you know, more value priced options here, 
life in the 25,000 hour and, and higher range for these, uh, for these types of products. And another key trend in these is really looking at, at trying to come up with products that are streamlined so that we can uh, start you know, getting the, the cost of these products down to make them even more easily, e e making them easier to, to accept there. And that's just a perfect example where we can start streamlining some of the heat sinking that's required to, to really get the long-term performance of, of A-line lamps, power lamps, uh, and, and others. So again, that's a again that's a key trend. Um, just FYI, I mean the highest light output uh, A-line replacement is uh, 27 watts. It would replace a 100 watt incandescent. So a um, lot of improvements uh, in these products based on uh, package of light uh, and, and and quality of light. Okay, when you start looking at the economics here, are LED lamps more expensive than the incandescent lamps? Uh, they replace absolutely. But you start looking at the energy savings. Um, you know, here's a here's that 27 watt uh, LED lamp. Over the life of this lamp, which is long, 25,000 hours, you're going to save about $200 in energy. So, um, uh, really, from a, an energy standpoint, these products all make sense, and especially for uh, commercial facilities where uh, the burning hours per year is uh, is significantly uh, longer. Uh, here's an example of, of reflector lamps. Again, 10 watts, 12 watts. I mean, these are replacing like 65 watt incandescent types of, of products, and again, 25,000 hours life uh, makes them uh, really a, a great, uh, great opportunity to get a lot of maintenance costs uh, out of your facility. So, uh, longer life, uh, significant energy savings. Anything compared to a, an incandescent or halogen lamp, hot wires in a bottle, if you will, anything that can replace those is going to be a real winner. Uh, in, in your types of applications, whether it's an office or a, a conference room. And here's just a look at, at one of the, the newer offerings, again, more streamlined uh, type of, of product, which uh, gives a, a great quality of light, nice smooth distribution that uh, really is perfect for just about any down lighting type of, of an application here. Okay? So, Energy Star is important. Uh, looking at streamlined construction, um, looking at color options, although clearly we're, we're looking at having a color tone very similar to, uh, to incandescent uh, types of products. Uh, but, but stay tuned as we continue to uh, uh, offer more options there as well. Again, are LED lamps more, more expensive than the incandescent lamps they replace? Uh, they are, but now if I think about saving you know, $150 in energy versus an incandescent lamp in that same application. And uh, as they say on some of the commercials, right, and there's more because, you know, maintenance isn't free. And, you know, you take a, an incandescent bulb that's going to last maybe 2,000 hours versus an LED that's going to last 25,000 hours. It's more than just energy savings. You know, what's it take to maintain a system like this? So here's just a, a quick calculation where you look at how many incandescent bulbs would I have to buy over the life of an LED product? You know, here we we're going to have to replace it 12 and a half times because it's so much shorter, uh, shorter life. Uh, how much does it cost to uh, replace that lamp? And labor's not free. So let's say it's, it costs $5 before, before someone finds out that the lamp's out, goes to the stock room, gets a new one, replaces it. So uh, that's another $60 in, in energy savings. So all of a sudden, it's not just saving $150 in energy. It's saving more like $240 in the total uh, operating, operating uh, cost of that socket. Okay. And again, utility rebates can help in uh, all of these uh, types of, of applications uh, to offset the, the higher cost, and they are out there. Uh, LED PAR 38, and I'm sure you have some of these, and down lights, and, uh, and again, there's, there's different varieties of these, uh, but let's look at just the commercial line. Um, you got some security lights on the outside of your, of your building. Um, th these products can be used indoors or outdoors. They're even wet rated, so uh, a lot of application there. The ones on the right, uh, more suitable where color is particularly important. Think of you know retail or restaurants or those types of uh, of applications. There again, all Energy Star rated, all available for rebates. And um, we all know about the MR16s and and plugging in replacement lamps and uh, how those systems can be uh, a bit tough to maintain because of heat and other other issues. Well, you know here there are LED uh, MR16 replacements that fit right into those down lights uh, or track heads. Uh, much longer life, and again, 7 watts, it can replace a 50 watt MR16. Uh, I mean, a great energy energy saving opportunity there, that's for sure. 
And then finally, a lot of uh, incandescent decoratives. Got any decorative chandeliers, all these little candle shaped and globe shaped and candelabra based, medium based. So, you know, light packages are getting getting higher. I mean, these individual lamps are three and a half watts. Some are four and a half watts, but they're replacing 25 watt incandescents. And again, if you have any of these anywhere in your facilities, you know how often you have to change them out, right? So, uh, uh, getting an LED in there that can uh, last uh, 10 times longer has a lot of appeal, I'm sure. Okay, um, you know, one of the things I was asked to talk about is uh, is fluorescent. What's new with fluorescent? So T8s have come a long way. If you've got T8s uh, in in your uh, in your facility uh, and you put them in more than five years ago, boy, you know, you've, you've you've got a lot of improvements out there, not just in more energy saving solutions, but in longer life solutions. So uh, fluorescent T8s um, are, are are here to stay. Uh, certainly not going anywhere soon, and they've come a long way since they were first invented uh, back in the, in the late 1930s there. So, you know, as we, as we look at some of these uh, options today, and I'm going to just start with what we call our standard 32-watt uh, uh, T8 family, if you will. Uh, again, uh, there's a lot of options here. You know, some have higher lumens, some have longer life. Uh, but the one I particularly want, want to call attention to is uh, the SXL, Super Extended Life, when we talk, start talking about SXL uh, opportunities here. Um, so here, you know, up to, what, 65,000, 67,000 hours. Um, it depends on the ballast. Um, you know, you get the longest life on these products if you have what we call PRS, Programmed Rapid Start Ballast. So uh, Instant Start was the norm. Uh, program Rapid Start, uh, originally developed to get longer life um, with things like uh, occupancy sensors and frequent switching, but uh, overall we find that we can get a lot better performance uh, with, with, with any fluorescent lamp when we operate them on these programmed Rapid Start uh, types of, of systems there. So again, this would be our, our, our F32 uh, T8 line, again, it comes in different uh, color temperatures, but new life ratings. Um, this is where it's really exciting and you start thinking about the life of LED systems uh, versus fluorescent systems. Um, F28 T8 has really become the retrofit for T12 solutions. And again, if you've already gone to T8s and you have F32 T8, this is an even higher performance T8 uh, type of solution. And by the way, again, the standard F32 uh, T8, the, the, the uh, SP product line. Guess I, let me back up a little bit, just uh, to, to recap a bit. Uh, when, when you see designations like SP, SPX, um, SP means color rendering in the 70s. That bottom line that you see there, that product family is the one that will be going away middle of next year. Uh, we petitioned the DOE not to get rid of that one. Uh, why do they get rid of it? Uh, because it's not quite as energy efficient as the as the products above it, uh, which have a, a little bit higher lumens per watt. So um, again, not necessarily an energy saving play. It's got the same wattage in that, that fixture, uh, but that bottom product line is the one that we will not be able to make after the middle uh, of next year. But again, not to worry. Everything above it is what can be ordered and what can uh, be, be purchased. Um, the F28, again, is a newer product line, more energy efficient, provides additional energy savings, works on the same system, same ballast, T8 ballast that, that you have right now. And again, this, this top one, this F28, uh, any of these F28 T8s have become the retrofit for T12s. They can give you the, the, the best energy savings, um, uh, but they look at the life ratings on these, and I think that's what's really impressive. Life rating on a programmed rapid start ballast is over 80,000 hours. I mean, that is very impressive. I mean, you start thinking uh, about, you know, if you operate a system 24-7, that's what, 87, 60 hours per year, 8,760 hours a, a, a year or so. Um, here we've got, um, uh, again, over 80,000 hours life. LED systems today, we typically talk in terms of, you know, of, of 50,000 hours, uh, L70, uh, meaning losing 30% of your light output at 50,000 hours. These products compete with the life of LED systems, even exceed uh, exceed the, the, the performance of LED systems. So 
uh, again, a great way to really uh, save energy and to cut your maintenance costs, uh, costs way down. So F28 T8 SXL Super Extended Life. This is a, a, new, a new life rating, uh, which uh, certainly is very impressive to me. Um, the bottom part of the chart, the, those three bottom lines, that is um, uh, the 25 watt. That's also a four foot system. Um, you lose a, a little bit of light output, but that would be your lowest and four foot uh, fluorescent solution uh, for your applications there. Again, uh, you know, 84, 80, 84,000 hours on uh, programmed rapid start types of systems. So again, very exciting, uh, super extended light fluorescence, which really, really highlight the importance of this product line and it will keep it very competitive for commercial, institutional, uh, and special applications. Um, and, and looking at, at just a, a few of these numbers here, and then just as a quick back of the envelope type of, of a calculation, you know, uh, you know just taking 100 fixtures, um, let's say you've got these old T12 cool white watt misers uh, someplace in your facility there, each one of those four lamp fixtures is going to uh, consume about 148 watts. If you burn them for one shift, let's say about 4,500 hours a year, and let's say your energy rate is somewhere around 10 cents a kilowatt hour, it's going to cost you over $6,600 a year to operate those 100 fixtures. Right now, you can retrofit to uh, an F28 T8. So I'm just looking at energy savings now. But each one of those fixtures now goes down to 81 watts instead of 148 watts. It's only going to cost me $3,600 a year to operate those fixtures. So the direct savings is over $3,000. And if it's an air-conditioned space, uh, you know, you're going to save uh, perhaps uh, another $1,000 a year or more on air conditioning. So, yeah, significant savings, changing out lamps and ballasts and, and going to uh, a, a much better solution. Money in your pocket and, again, might be some rebates still out there if you hurry. Um, that's it for fluorescent. Um, I wanted to talk about some, uh, some LED uh, types of, of solutions here. And you think about LEDs, I mean, you know, there's new products that are coming on the market uh, all the time. This one is very exciting because it gets into a whole different um, set of applications here. It's looking at, at high bay and at medium, even low bay, medium, high bay ceiling heights. And I, I had a customer come to me uh, at a conference, and he managed uh, an airplane hangar, and um, a couple of years ago, if someone would have said, do you have an, eight, an LED solution for 130-foot ceiling height? And you know what? The answer would have been, um, I don't think so, not right now. Guess what? Now you can. Um, this system is interesting because it is so tunable to the application. I mean, you could think of uh, some big box retail. You could think of warehouses, cold storage, uh, manufacturing, uh, gymnasiums, got some some great examples uh, of that. So, you know, what we call it is uh, Albio uh, lighting solutions here. Uh, you, you essentially can add bars of LEDs to fit the light package um, that you need. So one, two, three, four, six modules on a, on a given bar here, if you will. Uh, you can change the optics, you know, depending on the spread of light that you need, and it's very easily changed. You really don't need uh, uh, any tools, you can kind of do it on site. Being able to change drive current, what that means is so that you can uh, get more or less light out of, uh, out of a given module, again, depending on, on the application. Uh, different input voltages. Uh, we're focusing on uh, uh, two color temperatures, 4000K and 5000K. So cool white and, and uh, something getting a, a little closer to daylight, uh, but often used in industrial types of, of applications. Um, up to 55C max ambient temperatures, so, you know, good for uh, some very hot in environments. Uh, current foldback, uh, basically meaning if uh, there's sensors, you know, kind of the kind of circuitry that senses if it's getting a little too hot with the electronics, it'll start dropping the current to uh, keep the operating operation down, uh, down to a safer range. Um, this Department of Energy Institute is something called Next Generation Luminaires. Um, what they do is, is take a look at, at products that they really think are state of the art and show significant improvement and really should be recognized as a model for future product developments. And this product line received the Department of Energy 
uh, Next Generation Luminaire uh, Recognition Award in 2013. So uh, really a, a great, uh, great tribute. Uh, design lights, by the way, you see that in the bottom right corner. Again, if you start looking for uh, rebates from utilities, if you need Energy Star for uh, LED um, replacement lamps, you look for uh, design lights, DLC uh, certification, if you will, if you're trying to get rebates for fixtures. Okay, so uh, again, this has uh, everything going for it in, in, that, in that direction. Uh, just some of the, the features here, uh, field replaceable modules, so quick, easy to change, so you just start thinking about making a commitment to LEDs. Uh, this, is, um, this is important. Uh, you know, being able to, uh, you know, use different drivers, so again, being able to tune uh, the light output uh, to your application. Uh, one of the modules, you, you take it off or you need to replace it, it'll stay on, or if you have a missing module, so again, makes it uh, very user-friendly, if you will. Uh, it's got you know, Gary, a great robust thermal design, which allows you to get into some of these very hot uh, max ambient uh, temperature environments. So what you're looking at here is a profile of some of the heat sinking that's, uh, that's used on these, on these particular fixtures here. Of course, the LEDs love the cold, so being able to use them in cold applications is absolutely no problem. So minus 35C up to uh, uh, 50 or 55C is the operating range. Um, changing the optics, and this is important. You know, I'm sure you've all seen a ton of LED products uh, that are out there. And I'll tell you, just because you can screw a lamp in, or plug a lamp into a fixture and it provides light, or just because it's an LED fixture, doesn't mean that it's going to give you what you need for your application. Um, I had a customer who uh, talked about the, the distribution of light in one area it wasn't quite right. You know, what do you do? I mean, if you have a, a given set of fixtures and they all have a fixed set of light distribution, you, you know, you're kind of stuck. Well, here, you need something that provides more of a, an aisle lighting effect to light up vertical surfaces. Um, if you've got a lot of flat, uh, um, uh, uh, flat types of, uh, of workstations or, or a factory floor, you can provide a broader distribution of light. So, you know, the bottom line is you've got some spring clips here, and you, could, you can put on different optics so that you can spread the light to tune this fixture in case, if you have very sp specific uh, needs with, within your type of facility. So, again, it just adds to the, to the user, friendliness, uh, user friendliness and really to give you confidence in, in making a good decision here. Um, you know, a good lifetime, again, you know, temperature is, is, the, is the enemy of, of electronics here, so you got to do a lot of extensive testing uh, in order to, you know, even over-test and trying to accelerate failure and rapid cycle and all the other things you have to do to make sure that the weakest link in the system isn't going to fail here. So uh, there are guidelines uh, for how you can project life of systems, like TM21 is a perfect example of that. And, and uh, we here do, we go the next step. Uh, I can show you, uh, app, show you lab setups if you're ever in the Cleveland area where we, we take, uh, take fixtures and we'll cook them. You know, we'll put them, in, we'll put them in an environment where it goes up to, uh, you know, 110, 120 degrees at 90% relative humidity and, and see what happens. And then rapid cycle from very cold, to very hot types of in, environments there, just trying to uh, make sure there aren't any, uh, any fail points here. So very robust designs from electronics and a thermal standpoint, easy to change optics, uh, really uh, just some of the features uh, of, this, of this system here. Uh, just, uh, you know, just looking at what can these replace, you know, and so if you look around your facilities and what do you have, if you've got a 250 watt um, metal halide fixture, let's say, um, you can replace it with a one bar LBO type of system. And if you have 250 watt metal halide, you know that you know, 10,000 hours life or less, depending on, on light output requirements, uh, is, is, is common. Uh, 400 watt, tons of 400 watt uh, high intensity discharge, again, either metal halide or high pressure sodium out there for industrial and warehouse types of applications. There you would need a two bar LBO type of system. So again, you're going from 460 watts, lamp and ballast for your HID system down to uh, about 245 watts for a two-bar LED system. Um, if you've got uh, one of these six-lamp uh, T5 uh, high-output fluorescent systems uh, in, a, in a warehouse, let's say, then you would need a three-bar LBO system. So again, uh, again, fluorescent's pretty darn good, so not quite 
uh, not not quite the savings, but still you're going to be able to go from about 350 watts down to uh, about 300 watts. And, and again, for 1,000 watt metal halide systems, now I, yeah, I would need to go to a four bar um, LBO type of, of a system, so dropping my watts uh, in, in about half. So again, these would be some of the most common uh, opportunities to replace uh, one uh, HID fixture or fluorescent fixture with one of these new, new L, uh, LBO uh, LED uh, types of solutions. Uh, without getting into a lot of detail, all different types of mounting and, and accessories, you know, whether you need a pendant mount or, or chain or rod kit, so uh, all the, the different uh, attachments, if you will, and accessories that will allow you to install it into your particular type of, uh, of application. Um, it, with, you know, most, you know, almost all of these systems have dimming capabilities built right in. It's standard. Um, also, uh, this particular fixture uh, can be ordered with the wireless control, so something like the Zigbee, uh, a wireless type of technology. By the way, Zigbee is a, is a global a wireless sensing and control network. And, you know, uh, fairly low cost, low power, very robust. Um, you know, a lot of a uh, lot of different uh, uh, applications out there. It really, uh, I like this quote: Zigbee gives a voice to everyday devices that surround us, like light switches, thermostats, uh, meters, and of course, lighting fixtures. So, you know, when you think about where lighting is heading, this this wireless uh, wireless control and reporting and monitoring capability is, is clearly where it's at. Um, the last product I, I want, want to talk about um, is uh, something called, is also an LBO solution um, called the ALC4. Uh, think of linear LEDs now. You know, you think of our model of having a rows of fluorescent lights and what can I do with, uh, with, with LEDs to, to come up with, uh, you know, that, that similar type of form factor. So this is a brand new product, kind of the uh, ultimate in uh, linear LED solutions for all types of, uh, of applications. So again, think of four foot uh, and eight foot fluorescent type of systems. Um, uh, where would you use it? It could be retail, it could be a warehouse, it could be light industrial, uh, uh, clean assembly areas, parking garages. So again, you're thinking of either one or two light bars, meaning thinking of like single fluorescent lamp rows or, or double fluorescent lamp rows, um, four foot and eight foot lens. Um, Comes with different optical distributions depending on how you need light distributed for your application. Uh, different packages of light, and I think the really cool thing about this, it's very continuous and very seamless. I mean, you've got this nice continuous slick row of these interconnected kind of daisy chained uh, LED types of fixtures. Great color. And uh, you can integrate motion sensor and, and dimming options right into this system. So you see the, the dimensions there. So it's a pretty low profile. You know, you've got four, you know, four inches uh, top to bottom and, and maybe a little over about two and a half inches wide. This gives you some idea of how you would uh, connect these things together. So it's kind of a, a fixture to fixture uh, joiner end cap. So you can really uh, install fixtures uh, prior to completing uh, all the wiring. There's little keyholes that uh, kind of help make sure you have your alignment straight and keeping the fixtures that are uh, nice, nicely uh, connected together there. So again, very slick, easy to install, kind of the hallmark of LEDs in general. And, and this is cool. I mean, you can have this wireless control occupancy sensor installed in line with, with, with this fixture in a row. So you can get your wireless control system uh, and an occupancy sensor connected uh, right with your uh, right with your line of LED types of, of products here. This gives you some idea of um, you know power drops that could be connected to these control modules. Okay, so uh, you know essentially you know depending on uh, depending on the, the types of fixtures um, that, that, that you have here, you can essentially run you know six. Uh, six uh, eight-foot fixtures off of one of these power drops or 12 of uh, the four-foot fixture off of one of these control sections and power drops. So uh, again, very easy to install, very clean uh, look to the application. You know, one of the things that, that we do with, uh, at, at the Institute is, is create tools. I have a fellow on my team uh, who I call my tool maker, but he's created a, a lot of uh, interesting, uh, interesting calculation tools here. 
And generally, when you're thinking about lighting um, for your application, you're interested in what we call mean lumens. You know, what's the average light over the life uh, of that of that system there? So, uh, what we're doing is uh, is really looking at uh, you know mean lumens. I just want to look at energy savings right now and approximate light levels for three very common systems. So it would either be like a, let's say a 400 watt metal halide on the top, uh, one of the you know the fluorescent T5 or, or T8 types of solutions. And uh, one of these, uh, one of these LBO solutions here. And I think what's interesting as we start looking at uh, at the annual energy savings, and for just a, really a little bit drop in light output, but you see how you know I can really you know edge out even fluorescent with one of these LBO systems. So again, it's a, a two-bar system, so it's going to replace a 400 watt metal halide. Uh, again, very competitive with fluorescent. You can see that there, but. You know, I think when you think of the key things for cost of ownership, you know, just from an energy standpoint, hey, we're right in there with LEDs versus fluorescent. Then you think of the maintenance of fluorescent. And when we think about the average rated life of a uh, of a fluorescent product, for example, uh, that means that at, at rated life, whether it's 50,000 hours or 80,000 hours, that half the lamps will have failed by that point. You know, with LEDs, you know, we're clearly expecting no failures uh, as we approach rated life. So, you know, ownership, cost of ownership, num lamp replacements, uh, all play in uh, to all play into the calculation for your cost of ownership. So, again, fluorescent lamps, especially some of these newer, higher life rating ones, um, provide a, a great value for your types of facilities. Uh, but then, how does LED fit into uh, into this whole whole scenario here? And, and 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 clearly, depending on the application, how tough it is to change a lamp. Um, and LEDs have that cool factor going. You know, you want what you want, and they can provide a very different form factor, a very different type of application for your space. So um, interesting dynamic as we look at all of these different uh, lighting solutions uh, today. Um, that's all I have for now, Carl. Um, do you want to open, the, open up the, the questions here um, or anything else you'd like me to, uh, uh, to, uh, to go over? Yes, Mary Beth. First of all, thank you very much. The information that you imparted today was just tremendous. It was uh, very, very helpful uh, to our team, but for sure I'm, it's helpful to our customers, and we're just so glad that you were able to spend some time with us today. I wanted to remind everybody online that October is Lamp Month at Gray Bar, Race to the Socket, and we have some tremendous uh, lighting specials going on during this month. So if you're online and you're kind of on the fence wondering whether now is the time to do a relamp project, uh, this would be a good time to contact your Gray Bar representative because you can get a really good deal in the month of October. Um, uh, the other thing I wanted to remind everybody is that the presentation that was given, your presentation today, Mary Beth, is, will be archived uh, tomorrow sometime. It will end up on graybar.com. Look for the G2 Talk webinar logo and click on it, and you get right to this information. I wanted to re also remind everybody that uh, if you were one of the first 50 people to be on this webinar, you're going to get an email for a cup of coffee at one of those large coffee chains, and we're just happy to give you that cup of coffee. So uh, anyway, we need to move right to the Q&A. Uh, as we go through this, if you have a question, you can go ahead and type it in the dialog box under Q&A. And I'm just going to go through these, Mary Beth. Uh, we have quite a few questions, so this may take about 10 minutes or so. But the first one has to do with the New, the the u utilities participation in this whole uh, energy rebate thing. Uh, and here's the question. With the new low energy usage lamps, uh, the question that comes to mind is the utility company will be making less money. What will prevent them from raising rates virtually, nixing the savings? And, I, and that's a great question. And I was wondering if you could possibly address uh, the operational expenses that the utility may have, uh, the mitigation of building new new power facilities if we're more energy conscious, and maybe also the cost of buying electricity when the load's very high. And uh, so I wonder if you could address that just a little bit. Well, you know, I, I don't know if I'm an expert on, on everything about utilities, that's for sure. But, you know, I, you, when you think about our, our aging infrastructure, um, the reluctance to build new power plants, especially nuclear these days, um, so it, it really is it, – it, it, there's a number of different facets here. I mean, the key is we need to burn less coal. We need to control the greenhouse gas emissions. So there's an environmental impact 
which we're all concerned about. But there's also, you know, it, it, there's an expense involved with, with the generation of electricity and what do we do? I mean, do we really want to build new power plants? So it seems that, you know, the overall, you know, it, it, depending on the part of the country you're in, but, um, you know, having an excess of, of, of electricity is, is certainly not the, not the case. It's like we're, we're really trying to ensure that we have enough, right? So I, uh, well, that's, I, go ahead. I was just saying that's a, that's a great response because saving energy does help the utilities, and as they upgrade, uh, as they upgrade the infrastructure, the costs that are saved with uh, energy production, that, that cost there can uh, be diverted then to help the utility uh, build more infrastructure. So, you know, it's just a, everybody's participating there. The other question I had comes from Sarah about uh, – uh, who drives the rebates? We know about federal rebates. Uh, what about state and local stuff and utility rebates? Where do some of these rebates come from? You know, that's very utility specific. You know, one size doesn't fit all. Um, yeah, you know, so some utilities are going to be very aggressive with rebates, again, depending on the part of the country um, that, that you're in. So it's, uh, you know, there, there, there are federal initiatives uh, to use more energy efficient solutions. Uh, EPACT, uh, the Energy Policy Act, it had an accelerated uh, depreciation of uh, for major lighting retrofits that will also end end it this year. But the utility rebates is above and beyond, and again, very specific to uh, to the utility and how aggressively they're they're pursuing uh, more energy efficient uh, or promoting more energy efficient solutions. So uh, again, you know, you think of again depends on depends on the utility. I can't you know one size doesn't doesn't fit all. Some are quite attractive. Uh, Patrick's concerned about the promise, so to speak, or the warranty that says that a LED lamp will last 25,000 hours. Once the lamp's installed and it's with the customer, uh, how hard is it to exercise the warranty should it not last 25,000 hours? Are there date codes on lamps? How does that work? Well, I mean, there's date codes on lamps, and, and I'll be honest, you know, you get a major manufacturer and someone's returning a product and says, you know, hey, it's not lasting that long, you know, we're, we're, we're going to replace it. I mean, if it's a, a commercial facility, I mean, there's warranties, that, there's implied warranties based on performance, and there can even be more explicit warranties that are written that spell out the details. So, um, I think that's the advantage of staying with major manufacturers. They typically, you're, you're going to stand behind your product because uh, uh, because you have to. I mean, it's part of your part of the pride in your in your brand. So staying with a major brand, working with a major distributor, uh, those would all be be ways that you could uh, uh, eliminate that problem. Is making sure you're staying with the right people yeah. that are providing you those solutions, and they'll take care of you at the end. Yeah. And you know, and, and I think the point is very well taken um, regarding the life of LED products in general. I mean, you know, how many hours are there in a year? Eight thousand seven hundred and sixty, or whatever. I think that's the right number. But you know, uh, the fact is, you know, we're trying to project life. I mean, we can't burn a product quickly out to twenty-five thousand hours. So you try to be clever with your testing. There's industry standards on projecting life on these products. Uh, but the bottom line is I can't wait for 25,000 hours before I introduce a product to the market because everyone else is going to be on generation two, generation three, generation four. So, you know, uh, you, you, were trying, you, try to be, you try to be very responsible with, with your ratings and you base your life uh, projections, you know, based on established criteria. James would like to know how heat impacts the life of an LED. Like all electronics, um, uh, the, the enemy of electronics is, is temperature. Uh, so, you know, one of the key requirements for a, a good LED solution, whether it's a screw-in or plug-in retrofit product or a fixture, it's, it's controlling heat, so, you know, which can make or break the, the system. So heat, heat shortens life, decreases light output. So how we the do other these things? Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm, not, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. I'm sorry. No, I'm just going to say heat sinks are a key key design element in uh, in LED products. Okay, uh, Patrick asks about the uh, LED replacements for incandescents. Can they be used on circuits that have conventional dimmers? Um, it depends. Um, first of all, most of the products that are introduced 
will say that they are dimmable. Some of the early ones were not dimmable, but I would say today most products are dimmable. The compatibility between existing dimming systems and the electronic drivers that are used in LED products um, is something the industry is working on, and it, the situation is getting better. Um, you know, their manufacturers have websites where they'll, where they'll look at uh, very specific products and which specific dimmer products and models uh, are compatible with it or not. It, it's a tough. It's it's tough because there's just so many different dimmers out there. Uh, bottom line is drivers are getting more robust, uh, and and dimmers are changing in their design so that they are more compatible with these with these newer uh, products with the with that contain electronics. So you have to. I mean, bottom line is you really should try it. I mean, if it's not specifically listed on a website manufacturer's website to say it's compatible, then uh, then then try it. That may not be satisfying, but the worst case scenario, it's going to blink and it's not going to dim well. You know, that's. Uh, Brian would like to know about uh, LED replacements for floods, and he seems it, he indicates here that it doesn't seem like there's any high lumen solutions in the world of floods. Is there a 150 or 300 watt equivalent in LED? For like down lights, I assume? Um, I think he's looking at out floodlights. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's outdoor, I mean, uh, okay, uh, based, on, based on the wattages he's given, I'm assuming he's meaning some of the high wattage, uh, like halogen floodlights that would be used in things like uh, ballrooms or churches or, or things like okay. that. And, and the, and the bottom, line, bottom line is, uh, yes, there are products uh, on the market. The GE uh, has a, a product called Infusion. It's a replaceable puck that can be used in uh, downlight retrofits. Um, actually, they're going to be coming on the market starting at the end of this year. So you can start getting up to um, like 4,000 lumen packages. That's close to like a 70-watt metal halide. So that would be right in the range that he's talking about. So... Uh, yeah, yeah, stay tuned for those. Uh, Mike uh, wants to know if there's a list where he can get all the part numbers for the LED light options and sizes. Mike, I can tell you if you'll contact your gray bar sales representative or call one, your local gray bar office, uh, we can get that inf information to you ASAP. Uh, so just contact us and we'll give you the, uh, give you the part number lists for those replacements that you're uh, requesting. Um, John would like to know, uh, are there any problems uh, with some dimming ballasts and the F28 T8 lamps? Uh, in, you know, in, there are many, bottom line is, I mean, for the F32 T8, they're absolutely all fine. Uh, the F28 on, uh, on many dimming ballasts will, uh, will work well. Um, there could be exceptions. Um, uh, to that, let me uh, let me get a little more definitive answer uh, on on that. But you know, the bottom line is, you want to ensure uh, sure dimming again. The F28 should work. Um, I would I would probably try it on on that particular system. John, just to assure you that you will get you the right answer to your question. All the questions that are being archived, these will be forwarded to GE, and we'll get them to the appropriate product managers so that we can get a more definitive answer for you. Uh, I know we're putting Mary Beth on the spot with some of these questions here, but I wanted to assure you that we'll get you the correct answer to that. All these questions are being uh, are being archived. Uh, George would like to know heating costs are going up. As a general use, uh, as a general use rule, uh, used to be 10% savings. Uh, what is the general rule for replacements with LEDs? I think you mentioned that it was a third of a watt for every watt you save, is that for the air general rule of thumb? Oh, yeah, while the air conditioning is on, that's correct, yeah. All right, All right. Uh, Emily would like to know about on the Albert, uh, Albio lighting solutions page, uh, what are the CRI mentioned for at the bottom of the page? What, what, what flavors do these uh, Albio solutions come in from a CRI perspective? Generally, uh, and again, I, let me just check real quick. Generally, they're right around uh, uh, 80 CRI. Um, so again, depending on um, the particular um, one, I mean, the, uh, the one for more industrial types of applications, uh, 70 is standard, but you can order 80. For the ones like All the right. CL4 that, are, that are, they can be used in a wider range of applications like retail, uh, those tend to be, um, I, I believe they're about 80. 
and we will, again, the questions are archived. We'll get them off to GE, and we'll get you a, a more definitive answer. So we'll, deal, we'll answer that directly for you. Um, what does L70 represent? Uh, great question. Uh, one of the ways we specify the uh, long-term performance of products is specifying lumen percent of initial light output at a given hour rating. So if we say 50,000 hours L70, that means at 50,000 hours, 70% of the initial light output is still remaining. And I, honestly, you know, what is the end of life for these LED systems? You know, what is the weak link? So we know how to project um, lumen maintenance or light output over time um, based on models that we all have, uh, have confidence in. Uh, so again, that, it, it's, it's a way of saying, okay, when is the useful light over? And you're assuming 30% loss in light output um, would assume that you should change out and put something else or, or, you know, or, or replace, uh, replace the product. Donald asked a question about Albio fixture line. Will the LED board be up, up, upgraded every so often, and uh, will they be field upgradable if that's an option? Um, you're talking about, uh, you're, is he talking the driver? I'm not or sure. He, yeah. You I'm know, not I, sure whether he's, not sure. Again, we'll, uh, we'll, the, again, the question is being archived. Uh, we'll go to the exact product manager and uh, and uh, try to get that answer for you, Donald. So uh, don't don't worry. We'll get you an answer to your question. Uh, Sarah would uh, like to know if – go ahead, Mary Beth. No, no, I was just going to say that uh, in, in general, the, the LBO product line, it, it, you know, especially the one for industrial, really designed to allow uh, upgrading and replacement of parts a, 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 as needed. But if he's referring to the – Specifically to the driver, we'll get a more definitive answer for that one. Because they are going to keep evolving uh, and get better. <laughs> Sarah would like to know in the ALC4, are they outdoor rated? Um, I don't believe so, no. All right. Okay. Um, James would like to know if, if uh, GE has uh, LED uh, lighting solutions available that are washed down. Uh, not yet, but uh, stay tuned. All right, so there's something coming. Yeah. Uh, Kyle asked this question. Overall, which is better to upgrade to uh, from either HID or T12, or T8, or T5? Say it again, please. What? What? But everybody's signaling to me. <laughs> oh, repeat the question. Yeah, overall... Which is better to upgrade to, from either HID or T12, and then colon T8 or T5? I don't quite get it either. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, well, we'll, yeah, go, not, we'll figure I'm that one to. out, and we'll, okay. we'll try to uh, get an answer via email on that one. We're running close to our deadline, and uh, I just wanted to remind everybody that. Uh, uh, we will archive this. All the questions that we did not get to, uh, we'll, we will respond to each individual question via email. They're all archived, and we'll get you an answer. Uh, so everything will be forwarded to our product management team and to the GE product management team to get answers to your questions. We want to thank, Mary, thank you very much, Mary Beth, for uh, being with us today for this, uh, this time to talk about lighting in the month of October, which is especially special for Graybar since we have the race for the socket. Wanted to remind everybody that October is lighting month at Gray Bar, so if you're on the fence about doing an upgrade or you got some work going on and you need some great prices, uh, now's the time to talk to your Gray Bar rep uh, for the lighting specials that we provide in the month of October. Uh, thank you again, Mary Beth, for your time. Everybody online, uh, we thank you for your participation. Uh, Gray Bar is here to help you with your lighting uh, solutions. Give us a call. We'll help you any way we can. Everyone have a great day. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Thank you.